Hello, new viewers, returning guests, and like-minded health seekers. Thank you for joining us on our quest for discovering what's the best diet for humans and for ourselves. Today, we'll be discussing the most essential vitamin and how it supports our immune system, our mood and sense of well-being, and how it helps us get the nutrients that are in the foods we're eating actually making it into our bodies. Okay, let's jump right in. Vitamin D is a very significant and potent molecule. Vitamin D is considered a fat-soluble vitamin. Now, vitamins come basically in two different classes. You have water-soluble vitamins, meaning these vitamins will dissolve in water, are carried through our body with the water, and we pee them out. So these vitamins need to be replenished on a daily basis because we our bodies just can't store them. And then there's fat soluble vitamins. Vitamins that are fat soluble can actually be dissolved. They dissolve in fat, are absorbed with the foods that we eat that contain fat, and they can actually be stored in our bodies in our fat tissue and in our liver. So the difference is water soluble vitamins can't be stored. Fat soluble vitamins can be stored in our bodies and they can reach toxic levels, but it's really rare that, that, that you'd see that, but it, it's something to keep in mind. Now, all the nutrients our body needs are important, so it's really hard to say one's better than another. However, in this case, I'm gonna say that, in my opinion, vitamin D is the most essential vitamin that we, that we consume. For starters, even though vitamin D is technically classified as a vitamin, it functions like a steroid hormone a hormone, so that's uh, you know, that's you know, pretty significant and powerful right there. Number two, like there's like receptors throughout our whole body for vitamin D. Like our vitamin D has receptors and organs and tissues and almost every cell in our body, and you know that's also uh, pretty interesting that we would see that. On top of all that, over three percent of our genes are influenced by vitamin D. So you know, again, so that's all pretty interesting, powerful, and significant. But on top of all that. You know, vitamin D is actually um, a vitamin that our bodies can actually produce. Now, when we go outside, our skin you know, gets exposed to sunlight and the UVB rays in sun sunlight stimulate our skin you know, to produce vitamin D. You know, and just to put it in perspective, out of all the vitamins and minerals our body requires, vitamin D is like one of the only ones that our bodies will actually make. Now, whether you get vitamin D from sunlight or from food or supplementation, it's going to get converted to other forms that have very specific roles in our body. Now, even though vitamin D has various functions and very powerful effects in our body, today I just want to touch on a few because, I, because what I really want to drive home is the, the importance of actually getting your vitamin D levels tested with blood work so you can actually achieve and maintain optimal levels so you really get all these benefits that we're going to discuss. Just about everybody feels great on a sunny day. And a recent study published may just shed some light on as to why this is. In May of 2020, researchers looked at studies that looked at the effect vitamin D had on negative emotions. And what the researchers discovered was in fact that vitamin D does play a role in improving negative emotions. And they concluded by stating that patients with major depressive disorder and individuals can benefit from blood levels of vitamin D greater than 50. Vitamin D is mainly known for promoting the absorption of essential minerals like calcium, magnesium, zinc, and so on in the gut. Now let's just pause there for a moment. Let's just say you did a good job of getting these minerals in your diet, your food and supplements or whatever, but your vitamin D levels are low. Well, if your vitamin D levels are low, you're just not gonna be absorbing these minerals as optimally as your body's capable of. So, you know, if you want to get your money's worth so you don't just end up, you know, pooping all these minerals out that you, you, know, you just did a good job getting in your diet, you know, you, you really just got to confirm that you have adequate or to optimal levels of vitamin D. Vitamin D also helps maintain proper calcium and phosphate concentrations in the blood, which help enable proper muscle contractions. Uh, if you're prone to like getting cramps, you know, a lot of times we think of it as being related to other electrolytes like magnesium, sodium, potassium, but you might want to start by checking your vitamin D levels as well because they're 
But again, vitamin D helps maintain proper levels of calcium and phosphate in your blood. Vitamin D is also needed for proper bone growth and bone mineralization and the remodeling of bone, which is the breakdown and rebuilding of new bone tissue. And without sufficient levels of vitamin D, bones become too thin, brittle, or even soft. Soft to a point where even the weight of your own body will cause the, your leg bones to bow out. And you'll see this in diseases in children uh, like rickets or in adults called uh, osteomalacia where uh, your bones become like too soft. You know, you know, so let's just touch on that for a moment. You know, like we live in this generation where we want everything now, 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 right? But take bones, for example, they take a long time to grow. And you really want to be getting adequate levels of vitamin D and all these other minerals consistently like day after day week after week month after month so over time you really can build a strong skeletal frame so this is just something that you want to get right and you don't have to worry about it later on so again just another reason to know what your vitamin D levels are and vitamin D has other important roles in the body such as cell growth and differentiation and proliferation it's also involved in uh, programmed cell death and that's called apoptosis and that's a good thing because you want older cells to die off so they're not lingering around and causing problems inside the body. Vitamin D is also involved in glucose metabolism and it's even involved in the reduction of inflammation. And all these are really good talking points. So um, you know, if, you ever, if you're interested and you want to hear more about these topics, you can just leave a comment below and say that you're interested in that. We could uh, in the future do videos on that those topics as well. Now this last thing I'd like to cover about vitamin D is how it plays a critical role in promoting the immune response in our bodies. The, um, vitamin D is converted uh, by the kidneys into uh, another form of uh, vitamin D and it actually uh, modulates the immune response to viral infections. Now I, I definitely wanted to talk on this because Vitamin D's connection to the immune system isn't really talked about. Vitamin C usually gets all the recognition for uh, being involved with our immune system, but here we can see that vitamin D plays a direct role in you know, promoting a response to viruses. So this is a big deal, especially right now. This is something that we really want to discuss. Um, it does so by enhancing the, the pathogen fighting effects of the macrophages, those are white blood cells, and monocytes. Uh, these are the cells that learn how to really go after pathogens, in this case viruses in our body. So anything that's going to help our immune system, well, we, we definitely be, want to be paying attention right now. Let's just discuss just how big of a deal this actually is. In a study that was published in January of 2021, researchers looked at people that consumed vitamin D on a regular basis to see if there was any correlation with infection rate of COVID-19. And what they discovered was that people that regularly consume vitamin D were 34% less likely to become infected with COVID-19. And that's a very significant statistic. But also the key thing to point out was that people regularly consumed it. It wasn't something that they took once in a while, but it was people that regularly consumed vitamin D. In another study published in September of 2020, researchers took it a step further. They designed the study to see if there was any correlation between people that were infected with COVID-19 and their levels of vitamin D to see uh, if there was any correlation in severity and the death rate and how many people, the percentage of the people died. The data showed that if you had low levels of vitamin D, you were 50% more likely to, be, to become hospitalized. And if you're hospitalized and you had low levels of vitamin D, you were six times more likely to end up on the ventilator. On top of all that, if the people had low levels of vitamin D, the research and the data show that you were 14.7 times more likely to die just because you had low levels of vitamin D. We need to put that into perspective. It's been pretty well ingrained into our minds that if somebody is like older or if they're sick, they really need to avoid people that or possibly infected with COVID. Like, but just look at the data. If somebody has comorbidity, like this other diseases, they're 5.3 times more likely to die from COVID. Now, if they're over 60 years of age, you know, it goes up a little bit, you know, well, now they're like 7.7 .7 times more likely to die than an average person. But this really 
puts it into perspective. If your vitamin D levels are low, you're 14.7 times more likely to die of COVID just from having low vitamin D levels no matter how old you are. Another surprising piece of data that came out of this study was the relationship uh, of vitamin D levels and inflammation. Let's take a look at the data. The data showed that people that had adequate levels of vitamin D had low levels of inflammation in their body. They, they looked at a marker called interleukin-6 and that's just a marker that measures inflammation. And, but when they compared that to the group of people that had low levels of vitamin D, their inflammatory markers were high. They had um, significantly higher levels of inflammation in their body, which is, you know, pretty surprising, you know, like that there's this relationship between inflammation and low levels of vitamin D. Now, seeing how vitamin D was effective and there was definitely a correlation with uh, outcome, they decided to look at all other stuff, like a bunch of other supplements, vitamin A, C, uh, B vitamins, E, zinc, all, all these um, minerals, vitamins and minerals that are known to be good for us, even stuff like fish oil, you know. And when they compared like outcome to people who were on using these supplements, there was no correlation. Like it, it didn't matter, in other words. Like it, it didn't make one bit of difference, which, which was shocking to the researchers. It's not to say, so you know, what I get from that, it's not that um, these vitamins and minerals aren't really good for your immune system, like they are, but when your vitamin D levels are low, it's, they're just not gonna make a difference. So that was pretty um, I, um, insightful or eye-opening. You know, so, so they actually learned something from that study that, you know, with like, vitamin D is just more primer. You got to get your vitamin D levels up. You know, then maybe if they did another follow-up study, then maybe they'd see some correlation with these other nutrients. But the point is, vitamin D is directly connected to your immune system. Vitamin D as calcitriol is, a, is an important pluripotent hormone that's necessary for both your innate and adaptive immune system. Let's just speak just a moment on like pluripotent. Pluri meaning it does many things and potent is it does powerful things. And as far as like your adaptive immunity, now when you're exposed to a pathogen or in this case a virus, first your immune system has to identify what it is. And then it mounts a specific, a specific defense against that virus and pathogen. These immune cells have memory. So if you're ever exposed to this virus again, it's gonna know how to attack it. So this part of your immune system, you want healthy and active and you need you know, adequate vitamin D levels to do that. So it, if we just stop right there, we just kind of go back to the beginning. We, you know, we, we, we first saw that if you don't have adequate vitamin D levels, you, your, your gut's just not even gonna absorb all those minerals in your diet. And now we see it again if, you know, with your immune system. If your vitamin D levels aren't high, even if you're getting these vitamins and minerals, which are good in your diet, and you actually get them in your, can get them in your gut, your immune system is just not going to be fully activated. So, all these reasons are, you know, by now should definitely make it clear that you really do need to know what your vitamin D levels are, and the only way you're going to do that is through testing. So, you know, again. I recommend you just go back to your doctor, and a lot of doctors are good with this test. They will perform this test. So just ask your doctor to perform the vitamin D test and see what your levels are at. And once you get those levels, once you know what they are, if they're good, fine. But if they're not, you're just gonna have to get vitamin D on a regular basis to get your vitamin D levels to optimal level. Now, if, <clears throat> now for whatever reason, your doctor doesn't perform this test or you don't feel like going to your doctor, uh, we, we can provide you with these little at-home vitamin D kits. You just, you know, we, we'll, you buy them, send them right to you, you, prick your finger, put the sample in, mail it out, and then, you know, within about a week or two, you get the results back. So that's also kind of nice because you just don't have to go out of your house and you can just do it right at home. So either way, bottom line, you know, just get your vitamin D levels checked and get them to optimal levels. You know, so in closing, I just want to say thank you for joining us on uh, the our quest for discovering what's the best diet for humans and what's going to be the best diet for you. Uh, we hope you found this information very useful and valuable. And you know, please, you know, share this with your friends and families. And and like always, you know, give us a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. And stay tuned for our next upcoming videos.